Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Campbell, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to fix pronunciation errors in voiceover. So from time to time you're going to come across words or names that voiceover doesn't pronounce quite right. Now this is a little bit different than words that have two different pronunciations depending on their meaning, but they're spelt the same way. For example, read and read it's going to be hard to teach voice over the difference. So in this case, this is going to be for fixing times where it says the same word incorrectly every time. So the example I'm going to use here today is the word GIF or GIF. This is a graphical picture on web pages that people tend to share that is animated. And there's been a long debate over which way is the correct way to say the word GIF, GIF or GIF. So if I open up mail here, Mail. How do you pronounce GIF? You'll see that voiceovers decided that GIF is the correct way to pronounce it. Well, let's say I don't like that and I want it to have it be GIF instead. So to change that, I can go into the settings and make a little adjustment. So first, in order to get to where we want to go, we're going to open up the voiceover settings. And I'm going to do that by using Siri. Open voiceover settings. Here are the voiceover settings. So once we've got voiceover settings open up here, we can flick to the right. Voiceover. Voiceover. On. And eventually we're going to get to the section mark speech, but it's several flicks to get there. A slightly faster way is to drag up from the bottom, as speech is near the bottom of the screen. So if I put my finger in the center bottom of the screen and drag up, it'll be the typically second or third item there. Braille, speech, button. There we go. So let's give speech a double tap. Select speech, voiceover, back button. So now we're in the speech sections here. I'm going to flick right a few times till I get to pronunciations. You'll find it right after the voice settings. Speech, voice, pronunciations, button. Once you find pronunciations, go ahead and give that a double tap. Select pronunciations. Speech. Back button. All right, now we're in the speech sections. If we flick to the right, the second option is going to be an add button. This is where we can go ahead and add our custom pronunciations. If you've already created a few, after the add button, it will list off all the custom pronunciations you've created, and you can even remove or modify them. I haven't added any yet, so let's flick to the right to get to the add button, and let's add our very own. Pronunciations. Add. Button. Give that a double tap. Add. Text field. Is editing. Word mode. Insertion point at start. Now you notice immediately I'm in a text field. The text field I'm in is the phrase text field. This is where I can type in the name of the word as it's spelt that I would like to change the pronunciation of. I'm going to spell this one using the keyboard and GIF or GIF is G-I-F. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Cap F, cap G, cap G, I, I, F, F. All right, so now I've got GIF spelt in the phrase box. Now I'm going to need to choose my substitution. Now, since we use the on-screen keyboard, the voiceover focus is on that keyboard at the very bottom, and the substitution button is near the top. So my recommendation is to drag down from the top of the screen to find the substitution text field here. As you go down slowly, if you keep yourself in the center, you're going to come across that phrase text box and you can actually listen and confirm that you've got that word in there all right. So I'm going to drag down from the bottom. Replacement, heading, phrase, text field, is editing, GIF, word mode, substitution, text field. All right, I've made my way to the substitution text field and if I double tap on it, I can type in the phonetic way I want to have the word read. So if you have an idea of how it might be written out to pronounce the other way, go ahead and type it into the substitution section. But you can also dictate the change as well. And to do that, we're going to actually flick to the right one more time, and we're going to get to... Dictate Replacement button. A Dictate Replacement button. This is different than the Dictate button you find on the keyboard. 
it's going to listen to what you say and take the exact enunciation and convert that into something the computer will understand as the correct pronunciation for your word. It's not looking for a word that sounds similar and getting the correct spelling, which is the way the normal dictation works. So I'm going to go ahead and double tap on this. I'm going to hear the same beep sound that I hear when I use dictation on the phone. I'm going to speak my word, pause for a moment, and the dictation will end on its own. So I'm going to double tap, say the word, and wait for it to finish. Just like this. GIF. All right. So nothing seems to exciting seems to happen right now, but what's happened is I've been given a list of possible pronunciations based on what I wrote. I'm going to flick to the right to get to them. First, I'm going to get that to the heading, which is going to be the word as I've got it written right now. GIF. Heading. If I flick to the right, again, I'm going to hit done. Done. Button. If I hit done at this point, it's going to assume that I don't like any of the pronunciations it found. So I'm going to keep flicking to the right, and I'm going to get a list of options. Now, these might sound a little bit funny, but bear with me. Flicking to the right here. G small capital I. Theta. So this represents... Uh, the phonetic spelling of this word. And if I double tap, I'll actually hear the way that Siri would speak it if I chose this option. So I'm going to give this a double tap. Get. Selected. G small capital. You'll notice that voiceover kind of talks over the, uh, the, the speaking of the word. And that can be a little frustrating. Uh, it sometimes helps to temporarily turn off speech with a three-finger double tap and then do a one-finger double tap to hear that word a bit clearer. So I'm going to do a three-finger double tap. Speech off. All right, now I'm going to do a one finger double tap and I'll hear that new pronunciation. Give. Ah, perfect. So before I forget, let me turn my speech back on again. Three finger double tap. Speech on. I've got the correct pronunciation selected since I already double tapped on it. If this was incorrect, I would flick right, hear another version of the pronunciation, and double tap on that if that's what I want to choose. So I've got the one I want, so I'm going to flick to the left to find the done button. Done. Button. I'm going to give that a double tap. Give. Replacement. Pronunciations. Back button. That takes me back to the replacements page here. And if I want to hear just one more time to make sure I've got this right, I'm going to flick to the right until I hear the word play. Replacement. Play. Button. The play is also in the very, very top right corner if you want to find it by dragging. Double tapping on the play will will hear the pronunciation of my word. Give. Ah, perfect. Now, we're not going to go over the other settings in here, but if I keep clicking to the right, I can move past phase again and substitution and the dictate the substitution button. If I keep going, I'll get additional options where I can choose what languages this new pronunciation applies to. It's going to apply to English by default because that's what I'm using voiceover in right now whether or not it should be applied to some voices or all voices, and whether or not capitals make a difference. By default, it was not going to take into account any capital letters. So it will just see those three letters in combination, G-I-F, and whenever it sees them, it will pronounce them GIF. If I wanted it to be different, if, for instance, the G is capitalized, I can make adjustments here as well. Since I've got everything I want, I'm going to find that back button. So I'm going to flick to the left. Replacement. Pronunciations. Back button. Give that a double tap. Pronunci pronunciations. Speech. Back button. I'm back in the pronunciation section. I can flick to the right to get to the add button if I'd like to add another one. But otherwise, this should be set. So let's go back to mail and see how it reads that email now that I've changed it from GIF to GIF. One pass mail. Six unread emails. Jonathan, how do you pronounce give? And there we go. I've got the correct spelling. So it's a little tedious. It takes like several steps to get there. But once you do, you can customize pronunciation and you're not stuck with some weird pronunciation of a name or even hopefully it's your name. Now, this is a little bit different than using Siri to correct the way names sound. We're not covering that in this video. It's a little bit different. Uh, so this is not going to change the way Siri reacts. We'll do a separate video for that in the future. 